Hi, Jamie here from Southern Cross Yachting. Today I'm going to show you and talk to you a little bit about life jackets. Um, so in many parts of the world, life jackets are mandatory uh, and as an, as an RYA training centre, we certainly recommend that you, if not carry your own or own your own, you should at least have them on the yachts that you're sailing. There are a few different options out there in terms of life jackets. The first thing I would say is if you're buying a life jacket, a piece of safety equipment that may potentially save your life, um, it's worth paying a little bit of extra money for. Um, so don't go for the cheapest brand out there, go for a good reputable brand. The other choice that you have is that when you buy your life jacket, you can either choose an automatic life jacket and they generally have a red toggle, um, or you can go for a, a non-automatic type which requires the person in the water to pull on the toggle to activate the life jacket. Generally, these will have a yellow toggle. So that's a, a choice that you can make. As a rough ballpark figure, I would personally never spend less than about $150 on a life jacket, uh, just to know that I have that quality. In terms of putting the life jacket on, you can adjust the straps on either side, just like you would a normal uh, a strap with a, an, a, a, an adjustment here. You want to put it on like a, a waistcoat, so one arm in one side, the other arm in the other, and then you will have a, a system here that's a little bit like a belt buckle that you then feed the small bit through the big bit and you kind of have to force it through a little bit, which is good because it means it's, it's attached properly and that means your life jacket is now secure on your body. You want to leave a little bit of space in case you put on additional jackets or fleeces or things like that. Maybe about a, uh, a fist's worth of distance between your solar plexus and the life jacket itself. Most life jackets will also come fitted with a crutch strap and this is a really important addition or feature of a life jacket because it means that if you find yourself in the water, which is not where you want to be, but when you do need a life jacket, it won't ride up over your head either. Um, some life jackets do not come with crutch straps, but we would certainly recommend that you either buy one that has a crutch strap fitted or fit one yourself if, if you need to. But this is a really uh, important feature of the life jacket. Once your life jacket is fitted, you will then need a tether. So tethers come in various sh shapes and sizes. Tethers are really useful for attaching yourself or via the life jacket to the boat itself. Um, they will generally have either two or three of these self-locking carabiners. Um, they're very easy to use. You just simply push down on the little bit of metal inside and they're sprung load. So by releasing them, they will automatically close. Generally, you will have one on a long tether and then either one or two on a shorter tether. And the reason for that is that once you have the long bit attached to yourself uh, and make sure your life jacket has a strong point um, on it so you can attach, attach it via the life jacket, these allow you to then move around the boat. Um, and different boats are designed in different ways, but most boats will have various strong points that you can then use these on to make sure you're connected to the yacht at all times. So just have a look around your boat and make sure that you've identified um, where you can attach these. A lot of yachts will also have uh, lazy jacks or jack lines we call them uh, along the deck of the boat like a webbing strap that you could also attach yourself to. Generally in terms of stowage or storing it while you're uh, moving around I tend to attach all three carabiners to the life jacket like this. Uh, having it around your neck isn't really great practice it can get caught on something but what you might want to do is just kind of bunch it up a little bit and maybe make a sort of a, a knot that isn't too tight so you can undo it but maybe just sort of keep it there so it's not in your way while you're working on board but you can grab it whenever you need it. So I hope that makes sense. Okay so just another thing so that you don't end up in the water in the first place generally how we move around the boat is quite important so when the boat is under sail it will generally lean over a little bit we call that heeling. Um, try and walk on the high side of the boat, so the windward side of the boat as opposed to the leeward side. Hold on to something static, something that's not going to come away in your hands, like a lifeline or a shroud or a cable or something like that. Many boats have strong points that you can hold on to. Um, and move around, we talk about three points of contact. So three points of contact usually means two feet on the ground, one hand holding on to something strong, and then you have a hand to do whatever work that you're doing. You can also at times kneel right down. The important thing is to keep your center of gravity low and stay away from the edge. The other thing is if anything's gonna break, for example, if the boom suddenly comes away or if a shackle or a line breaks while underway, it's gonna travel downwind. 
So by being upwind, you're then avoiding that uh, risk of being hit by something. So that's how we move around a boat.